A big hello to everyone in Warner Media. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe during these times. In 2019, I have the honor of working with HBO Asia to create the original series Invisible Stories. This was a work that was very close to my heart. I was inspired to create the series because I felt an overwhelming need to share stories from this unseen side of Singapore, the country where I'm from. I mean, a lot of people internationally know Singapore to be this really rich island nation with great food. But beyond that, what is the real side of the country as experienced by Singaporeans like myself? So this was what I hope to share with everybody with Invisible Stories. Like 80% of Singaporeans, I live in a subsidized government flat in a regular Singaporean housing estate. Invisible Stories was pretty much the world that I came from. I grew up in a three-room flat in an old estate back in the 80s. My father was a taxi driver. My mother was a factory worker who lost a job during the financial crisis. So my upbringing was very humble. The interesting people I saw, the stories that I've heard, were all inspirations for Invisible Stories. I felt that it would be necessary to show international audiences this more everyday side of Singapore. Who we really are, a melting pot of different cultures, races, languages, dialects, many interesting and unique personalities. Invisible Stories wasn't a series that directly pushed any social issues, politics, or anything like that. I actively avoided having any sort of agenda in the series. The idea was to keep it simple and find poetry within mundane everyday life. Uh, I wanted to tell stories about common folks and tell them in a way whereby it is truthful and authentic to who they are in their original ways of life. As for the take back, I hope that um, as a society, we can learn to embrace and be proud of our diversity. It is a strength and not a weakness. In this age of subtitles, we no longer need to homogenize content. We can tell stories that are unique to our own cultures and we just need to be ourselves and proudly so. And this celebration of who we are will resonate with an international audience, especially through working with a global network like HBO. Well, I'll try not to worry about what is entertaining for audiences when I, when I write something. Worrying about that is like trying to predict the stock market and there are forces at work that are simply beyond us. And very often, if you do that, you end up making the same choices as the majority, telling the same cliché stories in the same safe ways, losing your voice. So personally, I, I just focus on improving my craft and telling stories that I strongly believe in, that are authentic to who I am. Because this is the only thing that I can give. Whether people like it or not, I really don't know. But I believe you can't make a wrong film with the right heart. Invisible Stories was very challenging to make. The pilot alone spent years in gestation. Although this was a fictional series, all our characters were based on real people. This series was particularly hard to write because of this. A lot of research had to be done in order to create stories that were tasteful, accurate, and at the same time emotionally engaging. For example, in episode 1, we told the story of an impoverished mother and her teenage boy with severe autism. We hired a special education teacher with more than 20 years of experience to work with him. It was very difficult, especially for the Taiwanese actor who played the role of the teenage boy. And this happens for the other episodes as well. In episode 2, our lead actor who played a spiritual medium had to go through special training from a Taoist priest in his temple. In episode 4, our lead actor who played a cross-dresser had to practice using his wife's underwear and master the art of balancing himself on heels. So, um, Invisible Stories was special in that way. Uh, it was challenging to make, but at the same time, it was very rewarding because we get to learn so much. <laughs>